Okay, very good. Okay, on to new business, counseling program review. We have the district counselors will present an overview of their program. Look at all these wonderful counselors yeah. here tonight. Yay. Happy National Counselors Week. Yes. Yes. Well, we're going to do a little different this year. Everybody's going to get a chance to talk this year, so we just get to stand up in the front. So I'm Julie Peterman, and I'm the counselor at Wyman Elementary, and we really appreciate that you have allowed us to come again and share what we do with you. And so I just want to review a little bit that we talked about last year, and I know I'm going to mess this up till I hit the up button. On the side, thank you. Apparently I do. <laughs> All right, so thank you. All right, go ahead and change it. So um, the, first, the first slide just shows what each of our buildings, um, our enrollments, who's all there. We do have some new friends this year, you know, to, to talk about, and so they'll be introducing themselves in a minute. But this is just a little bit about what our numbers are. Of course, you have uh, numbers, too, so that's not new information, but we always collect data. We want to know what we're doing, how many we're serving. Um, it's all part of the data we collect for our program. So then, um, to be a Missouri Comprehensive um, Guidance and Counseling Program, and I really need to take that word guidance out of there because it's no longer guidance, um, you... If they're fully implemented, they're going to enhance the academics, mental health, social emotional learning, student achievement, career development. They help create a positive learning environment, and they um, collaborate with everyone as far as parents, teachers, administrators, and and helps to create uh, helps enhance the learning environment for all. So, so there are four um, components that we put all of our time into um, to do our our job effectively. The first one is the curriculum. Um, we do have a set curriculum. We have our GLEs, just like all the other um, subjects do, and things that we are expected to cover. Ours get into the three areas of social-emotional development, um, academic, and career development. And of course, that looks different at each age. And I did a great lesson with my first graders on uh, careers. And um, we put up there what six different things they like to do. One of them was building with Legos, but you know, it all goes right. And then we compared them to working jobs. And I was so impressed when I went back two weeks later and they remembered the areas. And these are like big words. And they remembered their brothers and sisters and which ones they went into. And so, so we do start early on with, with what are we going to do when we grow up kind of thing. So it was really neat to see that. Um, and then the individual student planning, that is where we actually work with our students individually and what we're going to do to help them transition. Um, you'll see this more at the upper level, especially with preparing for um, going past um, post high school things. Um, but you know, at the younger level, we still have some students that we have to work with individually to, to try to make the program, to make education positive for them. Then the other service is responsive services. I think that's the area where most people are familiar with counselors in the individual counseling and the group work that we do. When you look at our time task data later, you're going to see this is the area where we probably have the biggest concern right now. Um, and this is the area where the kids are coming because they have immediate needs and concerns that we are helping with. And then the last one is system support. So those are the things we do to manage our program as well as to help the schools run effectively as a program. And so um, those, like I said, are the four areas that everything goes into. So I'm going to pass it on and talk a little bit about what we do to, to monitor that. Sarah Kalin from the high school, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the time task analysis. So three times each school year at a minimum, uh, we spend an entire week where uh, we document what we're doing every 30 minutes, and we keep that log, and we have to classify our activities under those things. It has to fall under the curriculum, individual student planning, responsive services, system support, and then there's that other little category that nobody likes to talk about, that barriers to implementation, so things that are preventing us from being able to fully implement our program with 100% of our time. So you can see there, those are the recommended uses of counselor time by the state. At, it, it varies to, according to, obviously, the level of students that you're working with there. So. Um, you can kind of get a feel for what that's supposed to look like. And in a little bit, you're going to get to see each building's breakdown for this year's time task analysis report. 
The next slide is about the internal improvement review. And we talked quite a bit about this last year because last year we conducted this where um, in each building we met with our administrators and kind of did a full program evaluation of how we're doing in terms of fully implementing our counseling program. How well are we meeting the needs of students, faculty, parents, and administrators in terms of implementing the counseling program. So we used that to inform goals and each building came up with their own goal as a result of that individual um, building data. We also compiled it as a district to, to evaluate the overall, the overall plan. So we presented that data to you last year, so that's just a brief reminder because we are going to be talking about the goals. Each building will talk about the goal that they made for this school year as well as update you on the progress towards that goal. So in the internal improvement review, you can just see um, this was where we landed as a district. Okay, we were mostly implemented at 80 to 90 percent in those different areas. Our, our percentage of implementation you can also see there. All right, so as a program, um, we chose a couple of goals. Um, well, one, one major goal, and our major goal was a program manual. Um, the most recent program manual that we could find was from 97, I think, um, and so it was a little overdue. So uh, we have spent quite a bit of time during our professional development days as a K-12 department working on assimilating um, our needs to the state model for the comprehensive counseling uh, manual. And the components that go into that uh, comprehensive school counseling manual, you can see there, uh, there's obviously the, the index and introduction, the program and components that include our content area strands and GLEs, the structural components of our program, that's going to be um, facilities and people, the program components, job descriptions and evaluation plans, our program evaluation and internal improvement reviews, as well as ethical standards, and then they also ask, the state asks that we include any school board policy as it relates to, um, to school counseling. So we have worked very hard this year during our professional development days. Um, we kind of divided and conquered and everybody took a section and we have we have these all as Google Docs now, um, linked to one um, index page where you can hyperlink to all of the different aspects of this. Um, it is still a work in progress. It is not completed, but we will continue working on that. So from there, we're going to break into um, individual elementary, I'm sorry, individual buildings and kind of update about our programs. First will be Nancy Cook from Mark Twain. Thank you. All right. So in my building, um, I spend most of my time on curriculum, so I have eight classes I see every day. Um, <clears throat> so that takes up the majority of my time, but I think it's very well worthwhile that time I spend with kids. I get to know every kid in the building. I see them at least twice a week during 30-minute um, guidance lessons. And then um, my main thing, because I do have them so often, I work on the curriculum a lot. So that was my goal, was to try to improve the curriculum and to make it meet their needs as much as I can. Um, so that um, I'm trying to move more into having centers, spending more of because I have them for 30 minutes, um, at least 20 minutes of that time, I would like to implement center time. And that's on the next slide. And it has some of the center names that I'm, that I'm looking at implementing, like empathy centers, you know, and uh, getting them more in touch with their feelings. We have a lot of friendship problems, you know, anger. So when they're with me, we work on a lot of that. And then... Um, Excuse me, could, would you mind coming up here? Because but, we're, we're televised, and that way parents oh, then will get to see your face. Would you mind okay. doing that? I, well, I hate to interrupt you, oh, but... Oh, no, that's yet, fine. That way people can see you and maybe make more of a connection oh, with what oh, you're doing no, at your school. No pressure. No. Thank you. I'm okay. sorry to interrupt you. No, but that's all fine. Like, I hope they all come up. Okay. Yeah. So, um, actually, I enjoy having the curriculum the way it is and in my building it works for us really well and it gives the teachers that hour planning time that they need and you know because I have their kids during that time 
in the, um, the rest of the time, like in the mornings from 7.30 to 9.40, I have that time to do planning and to meet with kids individually. And so I still do the small group. I get to do screening for academics and IQ for our student assistance team. So I like to be busy every minute. <laughs> so I don't have any downtime, but I like it that way. So anyway, that's pretty much what goes on at Mark Twain. <laughs> so do you go into individual, like you go to individual classes? Is that how you teach your classes well, and like are on a cycle? To that's that? a good question. They actually gave me my own room. Oh, so the, ki the teachers bring the kids to me. Uh -huh. So they're used to coming in and I don't know. It just works really well. It flows very well. I switch with the um, librarian. So I'll have a class and then in 30 minutes we switch classes and there's a doorway between our rooms so it works out it goes very smoothly so the students feel very comfortable with just that yeah whole process. they have it all down <laughs> I'm sure they do <laughs> better than I do I think sometimes <laughs> but, okay, thank um, you thank you for having us thank Nancy, you. can I ask you a question real quick oh yes do you think your time uh, doing the stuff with the students in your classroom uh, helps prevent or lessens the need for the one-on-one -on -one responsive services? It, it lessens it a little bit, but um, I know whenever there is an issue, a lot of times because of the lessons I teach, it, if they're having an issue, it will come out during oh. the lesson. So the, actually it kind of helps with the whole class because they all get to give input and help. So it's, they're You're very every, supportive. Every kid twice a week? Uh-huh. Yeah, oh, they great. rotate through twice a week, so it's um, it's been very worthwhile. I really enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. First of all, thank you for my job. I really love it. Um, I'm Rochelle Hawk from Truman. Um, our time is spent a lot differently. I. I have increased the guidance lessons. I only, um, I try to see every class every month. So I do not, um, I do not rotate every, I don't see all the kids quite as much, but I do get in every month um, to see every kid and it's beneficial. Most of my time is actually spent with responsive services, seeing kids individually um, or in groups. And at Truman, it just, is, it's a, it works better for us there. Um, and I do really love getting in the classroom, too. And I do spend a lot of my time, as you see, on system support. But um, I think that's kind of going down, too. So we're making progress at Truman. Um, so I didn't totally forget um, Ms. Whitaker's goals um, that she presented to you last year. Her goals were to um, increase the amount of career education that goes into our third graders, and which I intend to do. I've already um, given them personality assessments every third grader and so we'll move that into careers through the next couple months. So I didn't want you to think I just threw that one in the trash. But I also thought it was important that um, I have my own goals so I looked through the stuff that Miss Whitaker did and um, I thought a thing that I could do better was to um, to meet more of the counseling standards instead of the administration standards. Um, so I do very few administration jobs now and that's a definite progress that we have. They've moved my office. I guess we can just go on to um, what we're doing with it. There we go. Um, they've changed my office, which has been good and bad in certain ways because the um, I love the kids and the kids love me and they really just love to bang on my door every time they pass it <laughs> and come on in and and so it's, it's pretty much a revolving door all day long, which I love. I just don't know if the teachers quite love it as much as me. But um, it also, though, I hardly ever do discipline, um, which is good because I think once a kid sees you as a disciplinarian, you'll never be able to be their counselor. Um, so they come to me for, like, behavior modifications, but as far as discipline, Mrs. Harris does probably 100% of the discipline now, which is great. Um, we definitely have a lot more clearly defined roles between what Mrs. Harris does and what I, what I do. And we still collaborate on a lot of things, but I think it's definitely taken a more counseling role at Truman, which is good. And I do really appreciate having Tammy Cox, our Pathways counselor, because being, I'm not used to being the only counselor in a school at um, St. James. It was a bigger school, so we had more, so we had that person to bounce things off at. Um, and Tammy allows me to do that. We collaborate a lot on a lot of the kids, so. 
It's good. I've really enjoyed my first year. Hopefully they've enjoyed me just as much. I don't know. We'll see. Any questions? No? Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving fast. All right. Okay, so um, at Wyman, it's, it is interesting how all three elementaries are, are different but have some, a lot of the similar things, too. Um, I go into the classrooms twice a month and visit with the students, and I, it's great to see them because if they do have something, they get to come. When they come to see me, they know who I am, and um, they're not afraid to, you know, to share things with me. And they do tell me that they learn and try to practice some of the things I talk about, so that's good. Um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. So um, I worked on calendaring, which means that I um, keep track of uh, what I do each month, each day, all year, and kind of have a, a basic guideline to follow, which is something we all do, but I really hadn't written it down. I'm going to go to the next one. So something I did with mine is I actually made a working template for each week that said, this is when I'm going to see individual students, this is when I'm going to answer phone calls, you know, go reply to messages, and this is when I'm going to do this, you know, so that way I don't put something on the back burner and um, forget to do something I shouldn't have done or should have done. And then also it makes it better for visiting with my students because I watch my time better and make sure I get more students in during the day, um, especially some of those that um, need to see me once a week. I have, I probably see about 10 kids um, once a week. They're planned to come to see me for their individual reasons. And so um, I'm working on the yearly calendar yet because I'm kind of going through the year as I do that. And I'm also sharing my monthly calendar more with my staff of what I'm doing and where I am. Um, I felt, I'm, they always knew when I was doing classes but they didn't always know when I was going to meetings or when I was visiting with students. And I think that was good for them to realize what I do all day, too, so they don't think I just sit and, and hide in my office because I don't do that. <laughs> but um, the students would find you. You know that. They'll find you wherever you are. Um, I just wanted to highlight some of the things I've done this year, too, is revising my curriculum to match the GLEs because they've updated them. Um, also, we are working on reorganizing our um, student assistance team to include include preschool transition. Um, being new, everything is new with that, but we thought about, we know all this great information about them. Let's share that and move that on um, when they get to kindergarten so we can start them off more successfully in kindergarten and make that. We do that, you know, with elementary going to middle school, middle school until junior high, so it's just automatic that it should be preschool to elementary. And then um, I did increase my individual counseling time because of our responsive needs. And um, I'm also... I still have a doctoral intern from um, pa uh, Pathways that I work with, and I love having that person because they are full of knowledge and very helpful. And we just recently got Tammy's coming over to our building now um, for the other part of helping with students, and that's really been nice because responsive services is the area that is our biggest area and we need the most help in, so it's been nice to meet those needs. So that's Wyman. My name is Jarena Fleshman, counselor, one of the counselors at Rolla Middle School. Uh, as you can see in our chart, um, our graph, that responsive services as well is uh, the largest area that we spend the majority of time is in the responsive services domain, which encompasses uh, individual one-on-one -on -one counseling, small group counseling, um, administrator, teacher, parent referrals, uh, hotline calls, et cetera, things, things like that. So um, you can see our smallest area is curriculum. So if you want to go to the next slide, that is an area of improvement uh, we have identified as a goal for the middle school uh, is to fully implement the school counseling uh, program into all 46 homerooms and um, special education classrooms. Uh, which would encompass working with all students throughout the school. We have over nine, you know, 950 or 60 some students at our school. Uh, you want to go to the next slide? So ways that uh, we are making progress toward that goal would include administrators are providing support with uh, 504s in the NWEA testing, which helps to free up the counselors uh, to do our counseling duties. Uh, 504s, I trained um, Dr. Gwen Fleming and during the first quarter. Uh, to um, support, help us with 504s, and she's done an amazing job doing that. She has, takes on about a third of our 
um, 504 caseload. So she does uh, the fifth grade. Mr. Hauk uh, was the first year we did it last year. Mr. Hauk um, stepped up and he did, he started with fourth grade and so she just transitioned right into fifth grade as he moved into the assistant principal position. So uh, prevention consultants provided each sixth grade student with a drug and alcohol abuse prevention and awareness training called Too Good for Drugs. I, we had four prevention spe specialists come into our school and work with our sixth graders. Um, with, and that was an intensive two week class, about 10 hours worth of work with our sixth grade students. So that was uh, really good. Heard great positive feedback from the teachers and students. Uh, so I hope we can continue that program into next year and maybe include fifth, fifth grade as well. Um, our last, the counselors work in partnership with teachers to schedule presentations in classrooms, um, lessons that address the school counseling curriculum. So we, Mr. Bartle and I, we get into the classrooms as often as we can. And that's a goal of ours is to try to, to work into getting into the classrooms more often with our curriculum. Right. One of the things that you can see um, at the middle school, we uh, are able to get kids as they kind of start growing up, I guess, or start becoming young adolescents and work with the different groups that they may be a part of, sometimes not by their choice, but uh, help them realize that they can work together. Um, also getting a chance to see kids grow socially in terms of clubs and making clubs and being a part of something and realizing that there are other things involved besides what they want. One of the other things that have been enjoyable at the middle school is um, you know getting the third grade to transition over. Again we you know always kind of worried about them being elementary students and younger and yet we've been able to help them and their parents um, realize that the middle school now as a fourth and fifth and sixth grade really works well by having an open house and those kinds of things. That's the Rolla Middle School. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. I noticed that your barrier time percentage was fairly high. Can you comment on that? Is that because of the 504s? In the, in the I think as, again, as kids get older, then they start to realize that they need or their parents believe they need more and more resources and, and those things are the barriers that, that the elementaries may not have. For me, barriers would be primarily 504s. Okay. And should we have you explain what a 504 is? Does 504, I'll let Mrs. Fleshman okay. explain it. <laughs> a lot of times, a lot of people may not be familiar with that. A 504 plan is for students that have been identified with a disability and it impacts one of their major life activities. And so it needs to be substantially limiting to them. Typically at the middle school, that would be in learning, reading, concentrating, or thinking. And so that's where most of our kids qualify for that. Okay, and you. so it's just a legal document um, that's kind of like an IEP, mm -hmm. um, but not as intensive as an IEP, if that makes sense. So. Right. Sure, yeah. yes? How many kids are participating in your uh, weekly support groups? Off the top of my head, I'd say probably about, well, I rotate, like my incarcerated group, it kind of rotates every nine weeks with that curriculum. So I'd say through the year I service maybe 75 students through my small groups. So. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Becky Snodgrass, one of the counselors at junior high, and Jeremy wanted me to induce, introduce him as one of our students because he does that. <laughs> we believe it. It takes one to know one, I think. Yes. Junior uh, high is a different world. If any of you remember raising your kids at junior high age or currently have kids at junior high, um, so you have to kind of go with the flow sometimes with that. So if you look at ours, uh, responsive services is big definitely very big and um, sometimes it's a revolving door in our office and sometimes it's junior high drama that's not really that big of a deal but most of the time it's real life things you know it's the hotline things yeah. it's um, kids that have parents with cancer it's kids with cancer themselves and so there's there's a lot of different things with our responsive services. grandparents needing help yeah being parents again Mm -hmm. so. We have great grandparents that are raising a kid in junior high. Can you imagine that? 
you know, so. Yeah, so most of our responsive services, um, we do curricula, do curriculum. Yeah, we do get in the classroom. So. Um, I most recently did a section on careers uh, with our eighth graders. We do academic uh, planning and career exploration. Uh, and it came at a good time because right now we're involved with getting classes for the next year and moving on to that next level. Um, so I had eighth graders this year, so I'm getting them off to the high school. At the same time, I'm getting the sixth graders and bringing them in. Um, and, and Becky's got the seventh graders and getting ready, getting ready for them to be eighth graders. So Right, and, that, and that's with, like, tonight we've got to go back over. We have our scheduling open house tonight, and we're going to be putting classes in. Um, I go into the classroom with seventh grade on suicide prevention, and it seems very young, but it's statistically we need to be talking about those things. I mean, in, in that end, honestly, when we do it, we do it through the health classes, the seventh grade health, when we do it, um, we typically have kids, you probably did last year, I mean, we have kids come down and talk about some things that are bothering them. So, so that's what we do, one. yeah. Um, we uh, bold and underline working directly with students, and that is the one thing we feel is very important at junior high age. It is a critical time for them. Sometimes we just don't feel like we have the time to, to devote to what we need to be doing with them. Mm -hmm. um, Though we have to say, and this might be on the next slide, we've been very fortunate. Our uh, yeah, you can move it on. Yeah, please. Our administrators have helped mm -hmm. taking some of our um, non-counseling duties, like testing, mm -hmm. and then and WEA. We haven't had to do anything like that, so that is very helpful in that respect. So, and I think we work well as a team. Yeah, we have a really great team. Our administrators and us, we meet on a weekly basis uh, to talk about issues that we're dealing with with kids. More than weekly, really. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> we do. That's kind of as that, needed, so. really, which happens mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and we, when we talk about team, I don't want to leave out Robin Whitaker is the secretary in our office, and she is amazing with the kids and helps with, and with parents and with teachers and all that, too. So um, we have a, a pretty large group of kids in our grief group this year. Uh, regularly, there's probably 10 or 11 that come, and um, they do have a lot of grief issues, and, and so that's uh, in what's the best thing about the grief group is it's not what we do or I do, it's what those kids do for each other. And so that's a very important group that we do. So, um, we can go to the next. We work a lot with our with our teachers. You know, they're they're great in, in letting us know the issues that are happening in the classrooms, and and so they've they come in a lot and help us uh, in addition to that. So, okay. I think okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So initially they had decided that I would be up here and speaking by myself mercifully. They have, I've rallied the troops and they have come uh -huh. to join me here at the podium. So uh, at Rolla High School, we, we've completed the time task analysis and as you can see, a majority of our time is again spent with the responsive services and individual planning. Those, those are the two big areas for us as would be expected because we spend a lot of time talking to the students about not only steering their path through high school and trying to make high school as relevant for them as possible, but also um, planning for that post-secondary opportunity and making sure that as they come through high school, students are leaving as many doors open to them as possible so that they can walk through whichever door they want to upon graduation. Um, we do have system support time spent, a um, little bit of barrier, and you can see that tiny little sliver of blue is our curriculum time. So you can understand why that is um, a goal that we are, we are working on um, because there is some great counseling curriculum out there that we just aren't, um, aren't implementing right now. So um, the next slide talks about the, the plan, improvement plan that we had, goal that we had chosen last year. So it was indeed curriculum related. And then here's the progress that we have made on that. Um, we, um, Mr. Hounsom talked to us about an, another school was talking about a Naviance program. I think they say it Naviance. I, I call it Naviance. Um, but they, um, it's a, a computer-based program which would help us implement different aspects of the counseling curriculum more comprehensively through the advisory program that we already have in place. Uh, you're probably aware that um, 30 minutes a day, four times a week, students are in a study hall called Pride Time, and once a week, they are in a 30-minute advisory time, and that would be the time that we're going to target our counseling curriculum to. So we're looking, investigating um, that as an option, and I've actually been in contact with a school down in Ozark who does a fantastic job 
uh, Ozark High School of implementing their uh, their counseling curriculum through the Naviance program. So we're looking at going down and, and seeing how they're doing things and what their implementation process is. Um, the next thing is College 101. Um, Last summer, I was fortunate enough to get to go to the National School Counseling Conference um, out in LA. It was wonderful, and this was one of my favorite things that I came away with. Um, it was a presentation by the Dallas-Fort Worth District, so obviously we would be doing it on a much smaller scale here in Rolla, but a College 101 summer program to encourage um, a lot of the first generation college going students or students um, who aren't real certain about that, how that process works to come in for a week or two during the summer and we're kind of flushing out what that might look like for us, but to come in and spend some time exploring what financial aid is. I, you know, I had a student in my office this week um, who, who asked the questions com completely seriously, when I go to Missouri State, where will I stay? And so, you know, those are some conversations. So that's, that's a legitimate concern. And it, I want to make sure that we're getting that information to all kids so that they can head into their senior year. Rest assured, there will be a dorm for you to sleep in. You'll have a roommate that you have about a 50-50 shot of liking. And there will be dorm food involved that will be high calorie. So um, we want to make sure that kids are getting all kinds of good information about, about applying for college. And we're Working with, um, I've already started talks with East Central College. They have a College 101 curriculum that doesn't target just ECC. It, it is meant for all college-going students. And so we're going to not only look to partner with them, but the other higher education institutions here in town. Um, the Dallas-Fort Worth um, district, they took the kids at the as a culminating activity. They went on a field trip and did a college visit. Ideally, we would like to hit a, somewhere that we could get get kids to see a technical school, a two-year school, and a four-year school so that we can hit all of those. Springfield happens to be one, kind of a one-stop shop for those. So that's that's initially where we're looking at potentially taking kids to visit. Um, this, the cooperating schools in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, um, I, I will be throwing out this challenge to the college reps that I talked to. They offer a $500 scholarship um, that is drawn for at the end of the week for anyone who completes their college application to that college that week while they're while they're in doing this application process with us. So I'm hoping that we can we can drum up some support there from them, not just intellectually speaking, but hopefully a little bit of um, bang with the buck, so to speak. So uh, the next slide we talk about. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, I back. Sorry, Myra. Um, mock scheduling was another area that we made progress on curriculum this year. Um, when we come back in January is when we, well, we're just winding down the end of January. We've been winding down our scheduling process. Um, and so this year we ran the teachers through a mock scheduling where they were given a student's transcript with sanitized information so they could just see how would you advise this student in terms of getting classes, selecting classes, so that they could start thinking through the prerequisites. Because with 1,230 students, it's not possible for all four of us in a two-week period to spend 20 minutes you know, with every single student in the building. So using the teachers through the advisory program is key to getting kids placed correctly and making sure that they are taking classes that pertain to their academic goal. So that was a, a great experience for teachers. They learned a lot and had a lot of good questions and I feel like um, in the classrooms that we've been going into for the past couple of weeks that the teachers have a very good handle on, on, on how to help advise students. So then I will go on to our highlights. Um, Mrs. Lyle, do you want to talk about the groups that you have? Okay, so this year we offer, um, Mr. Bridgman and I co-facilitate a grief group. We meet bi-monthly um, on Wednesdays for a group of about probably have 15 to 20 students that attend that group. Um, I also, I, I personally facilitate a stress less group. Um, we have currently nine students in that group and we meet for eight weeks um, and I run a group each semester. Yeah, sure she does. Sure. This, this is Liz Pogue. She's new to us this year, and we're very glad to have her. Hi. Um, so I'm loving being a part of this team. It's been a really good transition for me this year, and I'm just enjoying it. So I would like to say that first. But, um, yeah, we have been very, very busy. So this fall we met, um, we went into every single, we saw every single freshman, basically, unless they were sick that day that we went to their class. Um, and we met with them and kind of went over 
parts in the handbook that pertain to the counseling center, talked about how we can be helpful to them, kind of gave them insight into credits. We talked about the attendance policy. We tried to hit the high notes on a lot of things that they had probably been hearing over and over as they were transitioning into high school, um, but we were hoping that they would see our faces and hear some of that information and, uh, and associate that with uh, people that can be helpful to them. And um, I thought it was really exhausting, and <laughs> but it was great. It was really, really fast paced and it was a good way to get into the classroom and, and for students to see us in that way. Um, we also um, did senior meetings in a variety of ways this fall. So um, we wanted ideally to meet with every single senior one-on-one, -on -one, discuss their post-secondary plans, um, talk about um, if there was placement testing they needed to do or some more exploration or research that they needed to do to make plans for themselves. Our hope was to do that. We met with more than half. Oh. I don't know what the numbers are, probably three quarters. Yeah. All but all but 50. Oh, okay. All right. There we go. Better okay. than I thought. <laughs> like and then we took all those students and met in one large group. And then I know myself, I've had a lot of follow-up meetings with those kids that got the large group. They've come and we've now had our one-on-one -on -one meetings. I think I've gotten all but like seven of mine. So um, it's been really, really great just to have those conversations. Um, we've also been hosting FAFSA and Financial Aid Nights. Um, we hosted four. Missouri s and helps us with the first one, and they really do a financial aid 101 and really explain some of those terms that if you haven't been around higher ed financial aid that you forget real quick <laughs> and help kids understand that and complete the FAFSA that night on the spot. We had really good attendance. We did, we Facebook lived parts of it. Um, and then our follow-up nights have been workshops and they're moderately attended. Um, a lot of our students are getting that done um, in between. So um, I don't know much about peer tutoring, so I should not talk about that. <laughs> okay, so at the high school, we do um, our, we work closely with our administrators, and we do, um, according to Pride Grades, we run a three-week uh, grade check for every student in the high school. And for students that have three or more Fs, um, we like to target those students, and we started something new, let's see, that started last year. We are matching those students with National Honor Society students during Pride um, to get some one-on-one -on -one assistance, um, mostly with math. Math is a big, a big trigger for a lot of our students at the high school. Um, it's been fantastic. Um, Improved grades. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's, it's been a smashing success, I think. Yeah. So, um, Mrs. Spurgeon and Mrs. Grisham um, kind of oversee that process. So, it's been fantastic. All right, so uh, the next bulleted item there is outreach and community updates. So we have been working to improve our outreach. Um, one of the ways that we did that was we went social media crazy. Um, we have, we're on three um, social media platforms. And most recently, uh, a week ago, we had the color, or the enrollment night was snowed out and, or frozen out and we, we weren't able to have that. So instead, um, I jumped on there and we did, I did a Facebook Live and parents were asking me questions live on Facebook and I was answering their questions and the number of people that we had who came through last night and said, you know, I didn't get on there when it was live, but I've watched it twice since then and I think I know what I'm doing now. You know, it really was kind of nice, something they could go back and replay. We also used that format to broadcast the college, uh, I'm sorry, the Financial Aid 101 that S&T came up and hosted. So if they said, well, my parents don't know anything about about it. I bet your parents have Facebook. Send them over to our page and tell them to watch that. And it, they really were able to get a better sense of it without having, for those that weren't able to attend. Um, and then increased contributions to our monthly newsletter at the, at the high school. We've been working very hard to put together some more detailed information that is coming directly from our office and going out in the Bulldog Bites that's put out monthly there. And then Mr. Bridgman's going to talk to you about uh, the community outreach and communications update that he did through the regional college fair. This year was the first year that we had went to. We uh, used to host an evening college fair, and that went over very well. Uh, but they had been pushing, uh, MOA CAC has been pushing us for a long time to go to a regional fair here in Rala. Uh, so I have been talk I was talking to s and and they were like, well, I don't really want to, we don't really want to host it on our campus because we don't want them to think that we're doing, you know, services that, then they get the credit and all that. So I was like, okay. So I thought to Dr. Pritchard, I'm like, all right, we're going to go for this? And he's like, 
yeah, what do we got to do? And I said, well, we have to open up our school building, which works really great with 10th Street because that's where all the buses came in. So this year, uh, we had six different schools that attended ours, brought their juniors and seniors to our regional college fair, um, and we had 85 college reps there. That's the largest we've ever had, even on our evening one. Um, so a lot of military. I mean, we had, we had representations from everywhere and everything. So a lot of opportunities for our kiddos, a lot of opportunities for the small schools in the area. Um, we have several more that are looking to come on board this year. Um, my only fear is what happens when we outgrow this because, you know, that's, it's getting, I think it's going to go pretty big pretty fast. Um, so those are some conversations we're going to have about how we're going to host and keep that going. But I think it's a great thing, one, uh, for Rala because it, it does show that, you know, that, that the, the board supports, the school supports, and we have a great outreach for that to, to be able to host something um, on that level. And, and like I said, Moe CAC has been asking and begging for Rala to do that for a long time. So uh, they obviously saw some some things there too. Um, the next thing on here for us uh, is the Bulldog Closet. That is something that I uh, take very passionately about. As you can see uh, throughout uh, the whole entire district, responsive services is huge for all of us. Um, and it's no different than, than that at the high school. Uh, and a lot of times it's to the point to where we're helping to almost raise and keep those kids connected in, in doing that with our school district. So uh, I have we have resources outside that come in and talk to us, with, you know, such as Grace and those places like that. But we have, I've started a closet, um, a bulldog closet in our building that has all the resources um, that a student needs um, that is utilized greatly. Uh, we have put a lot of coats on backs this year, a lot of socks and shoes on kids this year. Um, and that is, that's one thing that I think that we can be very proud in what we're doing. Um, it's way more than just educating our children at this point. It's also uh, helping to take care of them and keep them um, connected, letting them know that uh, they're an important part of society and, and they're important to us. Um, and so that's been a great hit. Um, I think it's only going to get bigger from here. I've already talked to Dr. Pritchett about some moving next year, so I'm hoping there's more room for me because I'm outgrown where I'm at and it's kind of scattered around the building. But um, So I think we're going to have a home for that uh, for next year, which makes me very happy. Um, and then, of course, we also help with, with that. We have the dresses and things for our girls that they can have. Um, and we help young men, too, for dances. Um, it's, it's just crazy, but there's a lot of kids that are, um, have really high needs that we can help with, and we're very proud of that. So thanks for all your support with that as well. Uh I don't know. I do know at MSBA last year that students that were doing the presentations, there was one that, that did a closet, was showing that they had started a closet and how successful it was. I remember seeing that. And then another question I have, I, do you all deal with like the homeless students in our district, I'm sure? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is there, a, yeah. is yes. there a, a big percentage of homeless students in our district? Or I, I, well, I guess any percentage on, is big if you're homeless. Yeah, you're and, and a lot of our, I mean, a lot of them that we are servicing like that um, may not necessarily fall under the homeless category, but are very much in need of those resources. Um, so they're, you know, percentage-wise, I don't know, like, our percentage of homeless in our district. But so, Mrs. Haskell, the, the homeless in our district fall under <clears throat> a couple of different categories. Most yeah. of them are what we call doubled up. In, in other words, they're right. living with perhaps they and their family are living with another family due to economic hardship. Okay. A lot of people, when they say homeless, they think of an unsheltered student who has no place to stay we have none of those that I'm okay. aware of so for us homeless are people living in shelters people that are doubled up or what we call unaccompanied youth which means they aren't living with their parents for whatever reason they've moved out of their household or being kicked out of their house either one and are living with another family all of those qualify as homeless um, under the law and out of the district of 4,000 kids, I believe we have anywhere from 40 to 50 that qualify as homeless. But it's all for those other reasons, not for an unsheltered living space or anything like that. Right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Almost. Thank you. Uh, I actually have a quick question for you all. Um, so what I've seen as the biggest issue, frankly, for my peers is mental health. So I was hoping maybe someone could go into a bit more detail about what you're doing to combat that. Yeah. Um, we... You're absolutely right. Um, absolutely the right. rise in responsive services is directly related to mental health issues. There, there has been a large increase that we've seen over the past several years um, in mental health needs for students. And we've been very fortunate that um, 
although um, Pathways Compass Health has implemented into many of the schools, we didn't have one of our own. So we saw a need, and uh, the junior high was gracious enough to share um, their therapist with us. So she comes over a couple of days a week to meet with students, and we're getting some direct referrals there. We do have a large referral list that we use for helping families access mental health care and um, trying to provide the best resources that we can there. So a decent amount of students are able to meet with the Pathways therapist? Is that right? um, the, the, it's a specialized program. So students who qualify um, typically are students who are on Medicaid, um, or I think that program has been rebranded lately, but Medicaid qualified students. And in the event that they don't qualify for school-based services, um, Compass Health does reach out to them and tries to um, get them into their network there. So those calls, we're actually very pleased, are happening very quickly. So if they don't qualify for the school-based services, somebody from the office is calling and saying, okay, you don't qualify for the school-based services, but we can get you in at our office. Let's, let's see how quickly we can get, get this help. Okay. So it's wonderful. Well, Thank Laura, you. Great Laura, question. in the spring, we entered into discussion in, in early fall with with pathways and it was pretty ambitious to think that we could get one counselor right. from pathways in every building uh, we're getting there we're just not there the goal is that by the next fall we would have one in every building and those services then would pick up so uh, that well and I'm sorry to interrupt the, the gal from that comes over from the junior high missus said well she does she started out coming one day a week and when we had an increased need um, she was able to work her schedule around so that she's coming in two days a week now so they're they're being responsive to to the needs right. within our building right. thank right. you thank you guys thank you, thank you. And bringing up the tail end. <laughs> She's the exclamation point. That's right. That's right. I'm Janelle Duncan, and I'm the counselor at RTI and RTC. Uh, my buildings uh, or our buildings a little bit unique in that we're kind of the second line of defense. Every one of the students that I serve have a homeschool counselor. For, their, for a lot of their mental health needs, but doesn't mean that they don't still come to me for different things. I definitely have you know, different situations, you know, or sometimes it'll be something that's carried over from the high school to us, and then um, I, I get involved. Um, but I am the primary counselor, or the only counselor for the, our adult students, which we have over 100 adult students, and there's always adult situations that come up, just you know, financial different things that they're dealing with, just trying to be uh, full-time students and families and things like that that they're having to, to deal with. But the majority of my time, I would say, would be working toward curriculum and ways to recruit because RTI and RTC is all about numbers. So my job is to work with administration and build ways that we can um, spark interest in kids so that they want to come and take our classes and you know our our building is you know not exactly you know right on the high school campus so it makes it a little bit more inconvenient because the students have to be bused to us we have 10 sending schools Rolla's our biggest of those 10 of course you know being in in the you know we are part of Rolla district but the the other nine districts that come to us um, probably or I'd say maybe 40 percent Rolla is probably 60 percent of the of the student volume that we have so we definitely um, you know try to work to you know teach about our, I, my job is to get out into the programs or into the schools and talk about what we have to offer students so that they want to take our programs um, we also have um, days where we invite students to come in so you can go to the next one um, because uh, counseling my my main goals for the the program was to um, improve our retention and um, and recruitment efforts working with administration to do that and so that you know I kind of came in new last year with you know not really knowing what um, what my you know duties were trying to learn them and then on top of that you know I tried to I figured that was probably what they're looking at the most. If our numbers, you know, took a big nosedive, then they would be coming to me. So that's kind of what I made as my goal: is to, you know, get, you know, as good as I could in that area. Go on to the next one. So, um, with that being said, one of the things that I have um, implemented is I've tried to get with all of the 
junior high counselors in the area because most of the junior highs, that's where careers begin. That's where they begin the discussions of, you know, what do you want to do? You know, this is your making their plans for high school. So I've kind of tried to, we, in the past, we had really looked at sophomores, getting them in the building, and, and we still do that. We still, you know, have them come in and look at, you know, our programs and that kind of thing every year, which is our, our you know, some of our bigger events. But to expand on that, I, I tried to get the junior high kids. I've, I've invited all of the junior high counselors to my fall meeting and, and had really good response there. Um, and then followed that up with having having them sign up for tours where they bring their eighth graders in, let them see what we have in our buildings. And then uh, the third stage of that is I'm having a non-traditional event where they're going to come in and do hands-on activities. So the boys are going to be able to do activities in nursing, radiology, and culinary arts, and surge tech. And then the girls are going to be coming in, and they're going to be doing activities in wood manufacturing, masonry, and auto tech. So they're getting to kind of see, you know, the non-traditional fields and get in. Again, every time we get them in our building, it's just putting a seed in their mind that maybe someday, you know, I would want to come back to take classes, you know, so hopefully that, you know, we'll get to see the effects of this. It's just a big process that we're working on. So, um, and also just at, at the other end of that, Sarah was talking about some of the uh, seniors that they didn't see. Hopefully maybe we saw some of those, you know, because we do call in our seniors and we talk to them and we have an enrollment night where if they're interested in coming back to our programs as adult students, they can um, come and we can kind of help them with their FAFSA or we can just talk to them about how to enroll in our programs. Um, so we had individual counseling meetings with all of those, with all of the seniors that attend RTI and RTC. But, and then we're going to have an enrollment night for those that have said they definitely want to come back. So um, we're trying to help. And also then, and lastly, we do a profession, we're doing some professional development with our adult students, trying to help them be more career ready so that they're, you know, not only taking our programs, because a lot of them are, you know, they're really, really good at what they do, but they don't know how to sell themselves. So we're trying to have Copic is coming in, Chris Link is coming in, and um, he's doing three presentations with me with the adults, trying to get them, you know, where they can do, you know, have a resume and have some, you know, things to um, kind of sell sell to a potential employer. So that's my goal anyway. So Great. anybody have any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to wind down. I, I did notice um, at the back of the board packet, we showed you one of our first slides was our breakdown of ratios, counselors to students. And I noticed the very last page of the board packet has what Rolla has for our ratios in addition to what's compared to the, um, what the state standards are. So if you haven't checked that out, you certainly can. Um, and then we did want to say thank you very much for inviting us to come and speak and give this program update during National School Counseling Week. It fits in nicely that this is the month you guys are talking about us, and we're here this week. Um, we very much enjoy our jobs. Um, we have a fantastic counseling team, and for the most part, I think we enjoy being with each other. <laughs> so uh, we, we do have a good time. So if you have any questions about the program as a whole, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, thank you so much for all that you do to support uh, kids in Rolla, including the counselors and the way, different ways that we can help them. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Good. Uh, if all the counselors would come down front, please, we'd like to have a picture of all of you together. Okay. okay. Sure. We did that at the beginning. What? Oh, you already did it, Jean? Oh, okay. Good. Before we got Great. Yeah. Before Wonderful. Can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah. Sorry. No, you're fine. Mm -hmm. do you, in talking about kids with mental health issues and all the <laughs> neat things you guys are doing with the kids, do you all have a method or a process where you can communicate as kids transition from one building to another? We do. Um, we are in communication with the building for, that directly precedes us, typically. Yeah. So the elementary counselors each get with the middle school counselors, middle school, junior high, and then uh, we high school counselors get with Jeremy and Becky. And sometimes there are phone calls that go on a couple weeks into school, a, a month into school, and, hey, this kid is having this issue. Have you dealt with this before with this child? And just kind of getting some background so that we can... We, we do collaborate not just within our buildings and at our age levels, but across the age levels, which is really nice. 
And I wanted to add, we at the elementaries, we all have student assistance teams, and those focus on academics and emotional needs. And so we have folders <coughs> that have all that information in them as well with the students that we're really worried about. And so we hand deliver those over as well when we talk about them so that they have that information too. So when they move to middle, they get that. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. Great. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good week.